considered to increase in atmospheric carbon dioxide because the plant material is absorbing the carbon dioxide from the environment. We burn the fuel and the carbon dioxide just goes back to the environment, right? So we do produce carbon dioxide. So it's not that no carbon dioxide is produced. There's just no net increase. Does that make sense? So when we take a fossil fuel, we're increasing the net amount of carbon dioxide. Cool? Production of ethanol. We start with photosynthesis. In fact, most of our things, we start with photosynthesis. Yeah. Biologists in the room, chemists as well, right? Going back to year nine science, right? We've got carbon dioxide and water with photosynthesis and sunlight gives us glucose and oxygen. We take the glucose and then we ferment it, right? Anaerobic. Aerobic means with oxygen. So an, the prefix an, means not. Right? Or atheist means not God, not believing in a faith. Anaerobic means not aerobic, so no oxygen present. So what happens is that ordinarily if we take glucose, so cellular respiration, we breathe in oxygen, takes the glucose from what we eat, it breaks it down into carbon dioxide and water and we breathe out, right? Essentially, that's how we get and ATP and blah, blah, blah. That's how we get our energy. Fermentation is without oxygen. So it's a different chemical pathway that produces different byproducts. So instead of producing carbon dioxide and water, we produce ethanol and carbon dioxide. Right? Similarly, if we reduce the amount of oxygen that we get absorbed into our body, our body breaks down glucose in other ways and forms lactic acid. Right, so you're getting cramping and etc. as a result of not getting enough oxygen to your muscles. Right? So different biochemical pathways. Cool. So we produce ethanol in that matter using enzymes. What's an enzyme? Right, biological catalyst, right? Helps to speed up biochemical processes. And we'll talk about enzymes particularly from a digestive point of view in unit four. So something that we'll come back to. We do, those who have done or are doing biology, we look at the key and lock um, model of substrate and enzyme. We do not look at induced fit anymore. Structure of glucose. It's a six-membered ring uh, carbon chain. We look at glucose in a great amount of detail, again in unit four, in food chemistry. We've got this other thing called xylose. Now, I'm mentioning it not because you need to know it, but because it's useful, and it has appeared occasionally on exams. So xylose is a five-carbon ring sugar, similar to fructose is a five-ring sugar. So what we want to be able to do is there's all these other byproducts as part of the biomass. One is called bagasse, or bagasse, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, which is the fibrous waste Products. So instead of throwing that out, we want to be able to utilise more of that plant material to get extract more ethanol out. And we can use yeast, right, which is a unicellular organism, right, and enzymes therein to produce alcohol. So that's how you create wine. You either use natural yeast or you add yeast. It eats the sugar from the grapes and essentially poops out. Ethanol. There's a limitation as to how much ethanol can be produced for alcoholic beverages. So, like, I think wine is a maximum of about 14%. After that, the yeast starts to die off. So, in order to get higher percentages of alcohol, you actually need to distill the alcohol off, right? Or add other. Um, so, if you want something like a, a fortified wine, we generally add something to it, right, to increase the alcohol content. E10, bit of extension, right? You may have seen this in the fuel context, right? That E10 is a blend of octane and ethanol, right? So we've got up to 10% of ethanol present in the fuel. So it's generally cheaper than our other, other fuels available. And that's because it's subsidised from the government. So the government pays for the subsidy for the ethanol 
to reduce the impact on uh, carbon emissions, as well as other impurities like nitrous oxides. In higher percentages, it starts to break down and corrode engine parts. So it's not really good to have, say, pure ethanol running uh, uh, engines. All right, let's have a look at some exam questions. Xylose, right? So I mentioned this because it's appeared on the, a couple of exams. Compound has five carbon atoms in each molecule, contains 40% carbon by mass. What, therefore, is the molar mass of xylose? How would you do that? 40% of the mass must be 60. Make sense? So if I take 60 divided by 0.4 or multiply by 2.5, we get our molar mass. Make sense? And what do we get? So 2.5 times 60 gives us 150. And look, 2008, only 42% of students got this correct. <clears throat> Nearly half of the students said it cannot be determined without further information. Let me just say, it is very rare, very rare, that if this pops up as an option on multiple choice, that it will actually be the correct response. Okay? So 49% of students perhaps didn't know how to answer the question. And that's what it says here. Popularity of option D suggests many students did not identify the links between the mass of five moles of carbon and the mass of one mole of the island. All right, another question. Keeping in mind, we've already calculated the molar mass of xylose. C5H10O5. We can break down into alcohol and carbon dioxide, right? As I mentioned before, using different enzymes. In a trial, one kilo of pure xylose is completely converted to ethanol and carbon dioxide. When I look at that question, what's the first thing that I notice? Do you think? Any guesses? What the first thing is that I notice in that question? I've got a balanced chemical equation, right? So that's good. I've got that. What's the other bit? What's the next thing that I notice? One kilo. What do I need to do with that? Fine mole, no? To grams first, yeah? So as soon as I see non-standard units, I'm going to be like, right, unit conversion I need. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do, we've worked out 150 grams per mole. So I can work out the number of mole of xylos. How do I do that? Yep, so number of mole of xylos equals mass over molar mass. My mass is 1,000 grams over 150 that we calculated in the previous question. Or you could have done it in this one as well. But just trying to speed things up. So 1,000 divided 150 gives you what? 1. Who's got the calculator? Warm up your calculator fingers, get your calculator out. I said you're going to need it every day. All right, 6.67 mole. Awesome. Now what? Now what do I need? I want a volume of ethanol produced. So, stoichiometric problem, balanced chemical equation, number of mole of known. Third step, mole ratio. What's my mole ratio of xylose to ethanol? 5 to 3, or 3 to 5. So I want 5 on 3, N of ethanol equals what I want over what I have times what I have. And what do you get? Right, 11.11 mole. Awesome. Now what? What's the next step? Mass. How do I do that? Right. Mass equals N by big M. 11.11. .11. Two carbons is 24, plus 5 is 29, plus another hydrogen is 30, plus another 16 is 46. So 11.11 times 46 gives you what? 511.1 mole. Now what? I've got mass, I've got density, I can work out the volume, yeah? If density equals mass over volume, 
then volume equals mass over density, yeah? So I've got my mass, sorry, that should be grams, not mole. Yeah, so 511.1 on 0.785 gives me what? Okay, 651 milliliters, right? Three significant figures. Three six figs, yeah. Three six figs in my response. Here we go, done. So, marking scheme, accurately calculating N of xylose. I would imagine most people would have been able to do that, provided they recognised the unit conversion. Accurately calculating mass of ethanol from the number of mole of xylose. That's our two steps here. Right? Common mistake is going to be the utilisation of mole ratio. And then lastly, accurately calculating volume of ethanol, which requires the use of density. Common mistakes, non-conversion of mass of xylose to number of mole of xylose, incorrect mole ratio, not calculating the mass of ethanol, so probably going straight from mole into there, and incorrect use of density, so multiplying rather than dividing. 45% got three marks, 21% got two, 14% got one, and 20% got nothing for this question. I'll pause and save that, and then I'll move on to buy these off.